G'day everyone, I hope you're doing well. Well, Planet Coaster 2 has been out for just over a week now, and uh, while people have been making beautiful creations, I've been stuck editing paths and figuring out cues and pools. Uh, so my journey started here with making a little hot tub, and I really wanted it so guests could get in and interact with it, and they can. And then I thought, well, maybe we can make pools that could have step levels too. And it turns out you can with a little bit of um, finessing. So this tutorial is going to take us through those advanced uh, techniques um, where you can create, you know, bulges and you know, maybe steps into a lazy river, um, a whole lot of control that I probably didn't realize was there. And so the tools Frontier have given us, they're a little bit hidden in some of the micro sort of changes that you might need to be aware of. Um, but yeah, generally uh, there's not much we can't do with pools. So let's get stuck in. Okay, so before we head to the deep end on advanced pool editing, I think it's really important that we understand the foundations of pool meshes in Planet Coaster 2. So I'm just using the draw tool here to create, you know, your standard shape. Uh, got the depth set to diving. And when we come out of the pool editor and use the multi-select tool, we can see the me mesh that Planet Coaster has generated. Uh, for this pool um, and in some cases there's curved edges and sometimes there's jagged edges um, but ultimately it's a 3d grid and each point along this pool has a depth set when we created it so diving in this case and that's why we get a nice flat bottom however you can edit um, the pool and use the edit tool and select the vertices along the edge and adjust the depth but the problem is, because of that initial grid structure, you don't have control of the center of the pool. In fact, it looks pretty messy and creates these jagged lines. And that's the nature of polygons. Um, so this shape here, there's some visible triangles here, and the engine is sort of smoothing them out the best it can. Um, and we can't seem to lift the center of the pool to create a, a more gradual entry. But with the select tool, uh, if we, say, pick this up and confirm the selection and then hit move can pull that part of the pool out and um, we can then access the edge and therefore the depth of those points so again pick this uh, piece and I can raise that up and now if I take the select tool again multi select tool and uh, confirm selection move it back I've effectively been able to set the height for those points but as i said it's not the best because we've still got this underlying structure that is pretty messy and so the the trick to advanced pools is creating a structure a mesh structure that's going to um, really be favorable to us creating the shapes that we want um, a couple more things to look at before we dive in is the curve tool as well so when we create our own lines um, it will do its best to smooth out curves you can actually set the rounding tool to zero and then restore the fundamental shape and that's really useful to sort of see the vertices with clarity um, when you apply smoothness it sort of you can see those vertical lines coming in it's it's applying its own curve um, in a lot of 3d software you have the ability to manipulate those curves with fine control but obviously in a game like this we don't have that um, but if you set it to strength zero, it's just going to give you a little bit more visible cues and you can always smooth it out later. So that's important to know. The next thing is stamps. So you might think, okay, well, let's just uh, raise the height with the stamp tool and make it all nice. So if I set that to uh, weighting and let me bring this back down to two, we can sort of smooth it out. Well, that's with merge on. Now the problem is here, if we go back to our multi-select tool, what has that done? It's created a real mess of a mesh. It's basically just adding and adding and adding. Um, and this is why you're getting all these ugly uh, points. We can, uh, to a point, uh, create our own structure, and we'll get to that too. But that's why um, when you're trying to even out things, it just seems to get worse because the manipulation of the mesh is um, really important to understand. Um, and so, yeah, if we have merge off, uh, just the last thing to see here is what's happening is the mesh itself is just getting added, but it's where it's not already existing. And so it won't overwrite 
whereas merge will overwrite the shape and create a really um, messy structure. So that's the nutshell of the meshes. Next, we'll have a look at how to create a much nicer mesh. Okay, so let's say we want to create some stepped entries. And uh, I've got an example here of two steps and maybe like a step and a more of a gradual uh, entry. The way I like to do it is to use uh, the stamp tool. And this gives us a really good foundation. So I pick the lowest scale there and basically just stamp out a grid. And if you remember when we select uh, the pool, you'll better see that grid with the multi select tool. And I can come in and manipulate the edges now on this sort of templated piece. And I'll grab that point. Now, the temptation is to raise these up individually, but that creates a wonky um, inconsistency between the edges. So you drag it like that and just gradually bring it up like so. So I'll just let's make a, like a curve. We can make a curve this time. Um, takes finessing and obviously the fidelity is in how, how you create your mesh. The more fine you create your mesh, the more control you're going to have. Um, what I should do here is let's take we'll create one step. So I'm going to skip two and then bring that right up. And now you can see I've got the foundation of the step, but it's too um, too wide. So we've got this weird slope. So um, you can uh, m manipulate uh, and move vertices. So if I just zoom out a bit and get across there and bring that up here. We'll move there we go um, and we can obviously move but the problem is again there's no snapping um, in terms of you know direction and there's a tolerance where when you bring two vertices too close to each other they merge so you can see that um, it's merging there so if I put it to there like that that whole piece gets removed which is not ideal so um, yeah again we we could get close but not close enough so the secret to creating a good step is to come out of the edit tool together and then because we've got our nice mesh we can just select those pieces and this is um sort of ignores that tolerance for whatever reason i'm not sure but that tolerance isn't there so now we've got a nice harsh sharp entrance and um you can start big like i have here and begin to um yeah bring things together so we might not need that and um I could, again, uh, I could bring pieces together, say, halfway. Here we we know that that grid is how, let's have a look. It's, uh, I think it's one metre, isn't it? Or is it two metres? It is four metres. Okay, so it's a four metre piece. Um, and we can do advanced move, put on the snap distance now. Let's say we want to halve that. Okay. Um, yep. And we can take those and snap that in. Just keep doing that. And effectively we can scale it. You can you, really the sky's the limit, you can do any amount of manipulation you want. Um, but yeah, it's uh fiddly, I'll put it that way. And you gotta come in and out of the multi select tool and into the other pieces. Um, let's say that's the profile we want. And um, we might just want to lower that one a little bit just to even it out. Like so. And what we can do now is uh, either duplicate it. So uh, let me get the select tool out again. And now I can just basically dupl duplicate this to make a, a square pool. And if we look at the mesh, you can see, uh, yeah, it's nicely uniform it's giving us the, the effect that we want okay cool we've got some templates and really the sky's the limit you can create any sort of shape you can make a bulge or whatever you might want to create a lazy river profile that has um you know a soft entry or a stepped entry i'm going to show you though how to create curves in general so i've got this uh, existing profile here and uh, i'm going to duplicate it give myself some room over here and we can again select it and you can duplicate it and move it out just slightly and create yourself a nice thin wedge. And so selecting with the multi-select tool and deleting that 
we've now got a really thin profile for, for bending and curving um, through rotation. So uh, we'll select it again and duplicate it and uh, pull it out here. And I'm just going to rotate this piece so that our steps are on the outside. Uh, so give us not snap, we need angle snap. Let's bring that around like so. And if you have a look again with the modisec tool, we can now rotate it um, with the advanced duplicate. So we want to probably turn off um, actually yeah what we'll do is we'll do a duplication there and there and there and this will give us um, a bit of structure in between so we can um, yeah not get too messed up can be quite tedious and it's not always perfect but generally if you take your time you do smaller pieces you're going to get a better result um, and I found yeah it is quite process intensive when it's figuring out the movement but once it's in game it doesn't really seem to have a problem um, so it's just the creation part seems to stagger sometimes but here we're having no problems at all so that's good So I might undo that and just give myself a little bit more than this. Okay. Now I've got what are they? Eights. They're eights, aren't they? So I'll take um, all of this and um, yeah, just want to check the vertices and make sure there's no weird bits because it looks like in here there's something not quite right. So I think there's a hidden bit in there. So let's have a look. Get our multi slick tool again. Yeah, there's a little bit there that's not quite aligned. I think we can fix that just by selecting it and um, yeah, duplicating it and just sort of snap it into position and see what happens if we go this side potentially. Mm -hmm, that's working. Um, alternatively, you just rotate around and around. But yeah, let's say we wanted this sort of arched entrance to our pool. Um, and now I want to have a nice end to those steps and a level playing field everywhere else. So again, I can uh, grab this very thin wedge. Actually, I'll take my original template. That'll work better. Um, Duplicate that. That should snap in just nicely like so. Um, and let's say from here on I want everything to be the same level as here. So we can edit the pool. From here to here. Something like that. Yeah, I don't know. You can you can figure it out. Uh, there's a whole different way of doing that. Let's bring that right up there. Select our piece. And now I'll take that piece there and move it in. something like that. Got a nice harsh edge uh, with a cool step and again just take this and off we go. Little funnies come like that, grab them and merge them in the merge tool. So you can see, I, I, look, the sky's the limit really if you've got the patience for this sort of thing. Um, it can be frustrating, you can experience all sorts of problems, but 
I think generally you'd agree that that's kind of cool and probably not what you'd get out of the standard tools. So yeah, hopefully that's been useful. Well, thanks for coming along the journey. Hopefully uh, you picked up a tip or trick. Uh, if you like the video, let me know in the comments. I'm thinking of making some more of these. I've got uh, some tutorials for advanced pathing. You can see in the background that crazy tower structure, which um, yeah, is basically made out of paths. And uh, yeah, there's a lot you can do with this game. I'm really excited to see what the community develops. There's been so many incredible creations already, and we're only at week one, which is just mind blowing. Um, the lighting, everything about this game, I'm just loving it. Um, I know there's been some criticisms on the UI and things, but they're getting better. Um, but yeah, if you want to share your tips and tricks, let me know too. But until then, I'll see you next time. Thanks.